right there, ladies and gents. We are down by the river slash sea line at the moment. This is a bit of an estuary slash river area. And yep, today's episode, we are targeting a mollusks. Scallops, mussels, clams, razor clams, and the likes. Let's see what we can find and see what I can show you all today. First find of the day. Nice sized mussel there. Yeah, they um, produce what's called a beard which is basically these fine strands here, which they used to hold onto rocks with. But yeah, lovely size muscle. Basically, you want them about the size of your thumb. That's a good size for a muscle, but when you are taking things like this, just remember, don't take loads from one area, forage around and have a look at what you can find. But yeah, there's also a few other things on here. We have an acorn barnacle and this little fella here by my finger is called a chitim. Yeah, nice find for today. I'm going to put this one back though and see what else we can find. And away he goes. All right, there, folks. All I'm doing at the moment is just having a mosey on down at the uh, low tide line. We have tons of uh, mussel shells, clam shells of the likes. Again, more clam shells there. And if we come across any, I will show you an example of what else we're looking for today. Here's a nice one, although it is dead. This is a razor clam shell. So yeah, what we are looking for is some little holes in the sand. These guys will be buried beneath it. I've got my salt with me as well, so we'll see if we can get a few to pop out if we can find some today as well and give you a show. Because this is another target species that we're going to be after. So yeah. Well, um, Keep moseying along. You can see another muscle. I think this one's pretty much had it though. But yeah, well, let's go see what else we can find today. All right, there, guys. This is a good example of a, a load of mussels and what I was talking about just a minute ago. A bit too small to keep some of these. But yeah, when you are collecting things like this, so if you're going to take any, you take a couple from here, move over to another pile, take a couple from down there move on up and just literally through every patch just take a couple at a time so you don't wipe out one population but also if we move on up a little bit we also have a uh, nice oyster not one to keep for today though but yeah we will do a catch and cook on some soon I can promise you that yeah that is a Pacific rock oyster so yeah another target species found today as well there are tons and tons of clamshells around loads of razor shells, loads of mussel shells, so hopefully today we will definitely find something uh, for you as well. We may even have a bit of a catch and cook if we can find a decent amount. So yeah, happy days for us. Alright, there we go folks, we've got some more examples of some nice oysters as well. Yeah, loads and loads of mussels around here. But exactly the same principle you would adhere to, you would literally take a few of the big ones. So if you're going to take any from here, take a couple of the big ones and then move on to another area and another area and another area etc that just helps keep the um, population sustainable and it means you they have a chance to recover as well if you just go and wipe out one section that you're just gonna wipe out the whole lot as they'll breed in a little cluster so yeah helps it for the future as well so just bear that in mind if you are foraging and you're out on the shore just pick a few from an area move on pick another few but yeah we're gonna um, make our way back up this way now I'm gonna have a little walk out in the tide line here as we're doing so but yeah sorry yeah the winds picked up a little bit now so sorry if it's a little bit rustly on the audio but yeah name of the game today is just to take our time slow and steady because you can miss a lot of things that are buried in the sand if you uh, go a bit too fast there we go nice cockle not a bad size I think it's just slightly under for being a, a kiki wall size, it needs to be a couple inches across, so yeah. Slightly bigger than that and it's all good, but you can also get the nice king cockles as well, which are like two, three times the size, and that's the ones I like. So we'll see if we can um, find any of those today as well. But yeah, if you're putting them back, make sure they just go back in the sand, like that. And then that's just literally how they sit. So yeah, as I said, name of the game is to just take our time, be slow, because you can miss so much otherwise. And again there folks, another nice little cockle. Yeah, found a few of them now. Not quite big enough for what I want. I'll just stick him back in, back down there. 
Facing upwards, there we go. I'll let him get on with his day. Yeah, I'm just literally slowly taking my time, going through, seeing what we can find. And that down there is a prime example, if you can see it. Again, far too small on that one, so we'll put it back. But yeah, that's what we're looking for. We're also looking for other species, looking for the big king cockles as well. Any scallops if we're lucky. Right there folks, that is the sort of size of a cockle you want. That is a nice one. So yeah, I've got my foraging bag with me, so I'm going to keep a bunch and see. If we get enough, uh, yeah, we'll do a Captain Cook. If not, we'll stick them back at the end. But that's a lovely sized cockle. Well there ladies and gentlemen, just came back up a little bit just to get my foraging bag out. And we are everywhere at the moment, even up here. Another compass jellyfish. Yeah, they've literally just invaded the UK waters, it seems. There's so many of them around. Lovely, lovely to see. But yeah, again, if you do come across a compass jelly or any form of stranded jellyfish, the best thing to do is just leave it alone. There's not much point in putting it back in the water because once they're on land, their tentacles just get ripped off across the bottom and they've pretty much had it then anywhere and they'll slowly perish, unfortunately. Such is nature. But yeah, a couple of good cockles so far. We'll carry on our hunt and see what else we can find. Right there folks, this is exactly what I was hoping to find today. We have got, oh, sorry for the awkward angle, so I'll switch hands. One pot of salt. If I pan around, can you see these keyhole shapes in the sand down there? They're pretty much everywhere. These are the vents for either gaper clams or fraser clams. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of a show and tell and see what we can have pop out. Oh, popped it too far. So, salt open. All you need to do is go over the hull, pour some salt in. We may get a couple up here. Let's see if we get any turfed out telltale sign is to there you go and straight away wait for it to come out and then grab it give it a little bit of a wiggle and gently pull it out and the same there a little bit of a wiggle if you pull too hard you'll break the foot off them and then uh, they won't be any good but yeah these are far too small for me I like them about twice that size. Yeah, well, um, pop them back into the sand. Oh, we pop them down, make a little bit of a wow. And pop them in. And the same with this guy here, make a little bit of a wow. Pop it in. And he should dig himself a new hole. Yeah, there's the other ones. comes out a little bit more. And you can as well, just a little bit more of a sprinkle on top. And uh, yeah, let's see if they come out, let's do that one as well. Here he comes. That's just a little bit on top, which they discard basically to uh, foil predators. What you want to do is grab a hold and gently wiggle and slowly pull him out. This is exactly what I mean. You can see the size difference. That would be a keepable size razor clam. This guy, far too small to keep. But yeah, and the same with this one. They literally just eject themselves. But yeah, lovely size. I don't know if the other one's going to come out or not. I think he's gone back yet, but I think he was a bit too small anyway. But yeah, let's um, make sure these guys do go back down. And they can dig themselves a hole. And yeah, this is exactly what you're looking for. Give it a bit of a wash. One lovely size razor clam. 
I will get my tape measure out and measure it because they need to be a good 10 centimeters before you can keep them. I'm pretty sure these two are going to be big enough to keep. But yeah, happy days. Right there folks, as I was saying, these things need to be about 10 centimeters. And as you can see, this guy here clocks in at nearly 13. And this one here, again, nearly 13 as well. So yeah, they're fine to keep. I do like them normally about 15 centimeters a bit bigger. So if we do find some bigger ones, I will put those back. Oh there folks, wind's picked up quite a bit now. I'm pretty much at low tide, but yeah. More jellyfish. So, so many washed up jellies. It's absolutely everywhere. But yeah, we've got a, uh, a few species in there to show you at the end. I'll see about doing a catch and cook. I say, it depends what else we find today and what we can get a hold of. But yeah, there are absolutely loads of washed up compass jellies at the moment. But never mind, we've also found quite a few small oysters as well. Nothing to sort of keep and take home, they're nowhere near big enough. But yeah, still on the hunt for those scallops. I know they're around here, I've seen a few shells, but just haven't found any of the big ones that are actually alive. We'll see what we can do for you all. Alright folks, well you probably can't see it very well, but here we actually have, if I get it from that way, a little queen scallop. Yeah, so we found a scallop today. Just not the uh, big king ones we're after. You can actually keep them, they need to be pretty big and you need a lot of them, so a lot of people like myself just don't tend to bother with them. But yeah, well, at least we found a scallop of sorts today to show you anyway. Even if it is pretty camouflaged in. But yep, the hunt continues. So more jellyfish as well. And also, on the rock this here, another oyster. All right there, folks. If we can see in that, there's a nice little show. Oop, stuck in the mud of my. Of some more queen scallops. One back there, one there. And yeah, that one, unfortunately, is gone. But yeah, I was just checking out a little bit of a gully area. Unfortunately, no big crabs in it. But yeah, nice couple of uh, little queen scallops to show you all. Other than the... Uh, I say no crabs in it, apart from the little velvet swimmer at the back there. But yeah, thought I'd give you all a nice little show again. And there are absolutely, oh, that's an empty one on the rocks. Tons and tons of small oysters. But yeah, pretty much at the end of low tide now, so we'll have to start heading back in a mo, and then we'll uh, show you what we found for the day. Well there folks, let's come to this sort of, of a mud bank area and there are oysters everywhere. Oyster there, another one there. We're literally just passing oysters left, right and centre at the moment. I say there's uh, loads of them on the rocks and stuff like that as well. Still none of the big scallops, they seem to be um, avoiding me at the moment unfortunately. I'll leave that one. <laughs> yeah. Still, absolute ton of jellyfish. Let's see if we can get across this. Uh, speaking of jellyfish, there's another one just down there. And even more jellies. Yeah, that mud's going to be far too deep for me to try and go into. But yeah, I'll try and find a little spot a second and um, show you what we've got today. We've got a few goodies, which I'll try and let go. Oh, I was going to say, I thought that would have been a, uh, well, it would have been a nice size oyster. But yeah, that's the sort of size you want. We're going to take them. Not the tiny little small ones, but yeah. I'll um, just perch myself up here a minute and uh, go through a few of the things I've caught today. So there we go folks, a couple of other things that we found today. Got some hard shell clams, some cockles, these ones here are razor clams, some mussels, again these are the sort of size of mussels that you want, at least the sort of size of your thumb 
as a comparison you want the big ones and again just to don't take loads from one area go around to a different spot and just pick a few off if you are going to and yeah a little oyster again for me that there would be far too small for me to have it would probably have to be two or three times that size literally there was a big uh, shell that I showed you a second ago that's the sort of size that you want if you're going to collect them and again I wouldn't go smashing them off the rocks that's just not my style unfortunately but yeah found a few things today um, I'll try and go back around the corner in a minute and see if I can get a load of salt out on a load of the razor cams and see if we can get a load of them to come up and show you that if I do manage to do that I'll leave it after this one but yeah hope you've enjoyed this little sort of session of mudlarking with me today's episode was just really about exploring a new sort of area that I have not been to before and seeing what we could find so good to see that there are a few goodies that we can munch on sort of later on in time but yeah I haven't found enough to keep I'm going to take them with me head back round and uh, if we do find some more and I do have enough to make a bit of a clam chowder or something like that then we'll do so but otherwise catch you on the next one When I said there was a lot of jellyfish about, I meant there were a lot of jellyfish about. There are an astonishing amount of jellyfish literally just being washed up along here at the moment. Literally just walking along the tide line and they are just everywhere. Every few metres there's just loads of them. More jellyfish, more jellyfish, more jellyfish, even more jellyfish, and yep, even more jellyfish, you guessed it.